In this lesson, I am going to explain to you about the group 14 elements. There are five elements in group 14. Carbon, silicon, germanium, tin and lead. And carbon is a non-metal and silicon and germanium are metalloids and tin and lead are metals. As I told you before, in this, in, uh, this uh, group, the first element uh, show the different characteristics as in the uh, group 13 ball. In this uh, group, first element is carbon and uh, it shows different characteristics than the other elements of this group 40. Uh, then, uh, if we talk about the natural occurrence uh, of carbon, we can naturally uh, find carbon in uh, coal, calcium carbonate, carbon dioxide, dolomite, graphite, diamond and in uh, fullerens. Uh, here I want to uh, show you uh, graphite, diamond and fullerens are uh, allotropic forms of carbon. And uh, there are uh, different kinds of uh, fullerens we can find, but uh, the most well known uh, fullerens is uh, C60 uh, fullerens. It is uh, called as buckyball, and there are some other fullerens. Uh, they consist uh, different number of carbon atoms, but uh, in uh, buckyball there are. 60 carbon atoms and uh, carbon is an uh, important element because uh, carbon is the uh, basis of our life and the most important element in organic uh, chemistry. Silicon and uh, germanium uh, are metalloids and they are used as a semiconductor in industries. Uh, now, uh, we have to consider about the uh, properties of group 14 elements. How do we consider the properties? Uh, metallic, uh, if we take the metallic radius, when we go from uh, top to bottom, here only tin and lead shows the metallic radius because the, uh, these uh, three elements are not metals, so uh, they don't show metallic radius. And when we go from top to bottom, metallic radius increase. And uh, coal and radius, when we go uh, from top to bottom, here, coal and radius increase. And uh, melting point from top to bottom decrease. And a radius of uh, M4 plus iron, here carbon and silicon uh, does not form M4 iron, so they don't have uh, that M4 radius, but germanium, tin and lead form M4 iron and they show the metallic radius. Uh, then uh, we have to uh, talk uh, further about the diamond and uh, graphite. Uh, diamond and uh, graphite compose same atoms. We call that homoatomic uh, lattice structures. But uh, they show uh, two hybridizations. Diamond show sp3 uh, hybridized uh, carbon and uh, graphite show sp2 hybridized carbon. Uh, because of that hybridization, uh, they show different structures. Because uh, as you know, sp3 hybridized uh, molecules have tetrahedral structure and sp2 hybridized molecules have trigonal planar structure. So, uh, 
Diamond consists crystalline structure and graphite consists uh, stacked to dimensional carbon layers. Uh, the carbon carbon bonds in graphite are shorter than uh, diamond uh, due to hybridization of these carbon atoms. Uh, but uh, the most harder uh, structure is uh, diamond because that lattice is more stronger than the uh, graphite structure. Graphite is an uh, electron and thermal conductor because graphite consists delocalized uh, five electrons because it has sp2 hybridization and it consists another p orbital and that p orbital delocalized and uh, because of that graphite can uh, act as a electrical and thermal conductor. Uh, so the interaction between uh, carbon layers in graphite are weak and this makes the graphite uh, as a good lubricant. This is the picture of the hybridization of graphite. Here you can see if we take one carbon atom, it combined with another three carbon atoms and it has delocalized five bonds. Here you can see that in this picture. This is the delocalized five orbitals of the graphite. Then uh, if we take a structure of diamond, it consists sp3 hybridization that means one carbon atom combined with another four carbon atoms. If we take this molecule, this is the center carbon atom and it combined to another four carbon atoms here one, two, three and four. So this is the structure of diamond and uh, if we uh, consider about this picture in here in sp2 hybridization one carbon atom combined with another three carbons in the part. But uh, fullerens are uh, heavier than these two structures. Uh, it consists 60 carbon atoms. Then we have to uh, talk about the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Carbon uh, monoxide is a colorless, odorless and high poisonous gas and uh, it consists uh, double bond but that uh, double bond uh, is uh, different because it shows the restructure of this uh, that carbon monoxide has the different type of double bond and this is the restructure of the carbon monoxide that shows it has triple bond nature between two carbon atoms, not the typical double bond. And uh, carbon monoxide is a reducing agent and uh, in iron production we use carbon monoxide as a reducing agent. Here I have shown
showing you the uh, ion expression. Uh, this is not in your syllabus. I just want to show carbon dioxide. Uh, as you know, carbon dioxide uh, is a nonpolar molecule, and uh, carbon dioxide has only uh, London forces. These forces are very weak. So, in low temperatures and under high pressure, carbon dioxide uh, solidified and uh, we call that dry ice. And uh, this uh, solidified carbon dioxide uh, sublimates to produce uh, gaseous carbon dioxide under normal atmospheric uh, conditions. So, uh, that's why uh, this uh, dry ice is used as the freezing agent in uh, food industry and to produce artificial rain. So uh, this is the Lewis structure of carbon dioxide. Now we have to uh, talk about the carbonic acid. Uh, how we can uh, produce carbonic acid? Carbonic acid can be prepared by dissolving carbon dioxide in water under pressure. These are the equations of uh, producing carbonic acid. And this is the bond structure of carbonic acid. Uh, when we consider about the bond structure of carbonic acid, uh, the hydrogen atom which is directly connected to oxygen. So there are two hydrogen atoms directly connected to oxygen can be released as a proton. So uh, that's why the carbonic acid uh, can react as a uh, diprotic acid. Uh, then uh, if we consider about the uh, reactions of uh, carbon dioxide uh, with uh, bases, uh, when carbon dioxide react with bases, it produces uh, relevant carbonate and uh, in the presence of uh, excess carbon dioxide, group 1 and 2 carbonates produce hydrogen carbonates. These are the equations for the production of uh, sodium bicarbonate. First, carbon dioxide reacts with sodium hydroxide and produces sodium carbonate. Then, uh, in excess carbon dioxide, that carbon dioxide react with carbon dioxide uh, and produce sodium bicarbonate. So uh, this is the detail about the group 14 elements. Uh, then later we have to uh, talk about the other groups of the p-block elements.